This is the Lecturing Birds How to Fly podcast with London and national promoter Jason Denyer. Hello Jason, thank you very much for doing this. No worries, thanks a lot. Um, let's start by, if you could please uh, tell us what it is you do in terms of your day-to-day job and, and how would you describe what you do? Okay, cool, yeah. So um, I do a multitude of jobs really, um, from sort of venue consultancy, helping out venue, different venues um, with with anything they need, really, whether it's new club nights or anything, really. It could be DJs or whatever. Um, I also run a whole bunch of my own events, from dancehall nights to hip-hop nights to all sorts, like the whole range, basically. Um, and I also DJ a lot of the time as well. Okay. And what is your setup in terms of your company? Do you have employees? Is it just you? Are you freelance? Yeah, no. So um, I like to keep my costs to a minimum. So I try to do a lot of things myself. Um, I also work from home. Uh, yeah, so I do a lot of things myself. So whether it's for advertising or a lot of graphics or anything really, I sort of I do try and keep my costs to a minimum basically across the board. And do you have any idea how many events you put on personally per year, approximately? Personally, um, maybe. So maybe like 40, 45, 50. And, and then all in London? No, all around the UK. But So that's me personally, but then I'm, I'm, I, sort, I look after a lots of like people's club nights for them as well. So plus maybe like another like. 50 or 60 just through um through like uh employment basically and talk us through one event let's let's uh give give us an example of an event and how it would work from start to finish what would you do okay so i sort of pick i pick something that i want to do whether it's a genre of music or an idea or you know something on trend or something like that so i come up with the idea uh i, I either do the graphics myself or get a good friend of mine to do it for me. Um, I create the artwork. I set an event up on Facebook generally. Um, I sort of put it up, put a bit of money behind some targeting adverts. I sort of pick, I'm quite good at picking, in my opinion, uh, events that I feel have a, like a high chance of success because of like Facebook reach and targeting pools and stuff like that. So my des- a decision when I decide to do an event, because um, I have you know, ideas for events all the time, but, you know, whittling them down to the ones I actually think will work. Um, yeah, I sort of have to think about things, and it's all down to, like, advertising opportunities, basically. Um, but, yeah, so I create the... I, I, cre- I come up with the idea, get the artwork made, um, <clears throat> get it up online, test the reaction, and if it sort of... If, there's, if the water's a bit warm, I sort of warm it up even more, basically, and sort of... Uh, get the ball rolling how how will you know if an event is 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 warm as you say um okay so i mean i guess that comes down to a little bit of personal experience but ultimately you can you can see through numbers like you know organic viral traction i guess is like the sort of uh the thing that i'm looking for how do you see if that's happening or not because sometimes you can put an event up for a brand and it just you mean an event on facebook yeah sorry an event on facebook sorry and and it just starts to build itself, you know, and you can like sort of watch it and you'd be like, okay. And then you've like, what, what else can I add to this? And then, you know, if, if, it, and if you, if I believe that I can get it up to the right numbers, then I pursue it basically. Um, so what happens if, um, you launch an event and it looks like it's not warm. It looks like it isn't getting a great audience reaction. Uh, so, okay. That's happened a couple of times. Um, so one thing to do is either ch- change uh, change the event a little bit. Um, a, a lot of things is about, it's not about the p- product, essentially. It's about how you um, package it. And I feel like you you know about that. Um, <clears throat> you know, you can pack it, you could have the same product and package it in two ways. And package A will get a bad reaction. And package B, you know, could get an amazing reaction. But essentially you're marketing the same thing. So I could... I could implement a change of artwork or a change of name or something like that and give it another go that way. Or, you know, if worse comes to worse, it just has to get pulled, basically. Just, you know, what, as long what as will happen on. if you pull the show? What, what's the downside for you? There is no downside, really. Um, 
you know, I work with a lot of event. I I work with a lot of venues that I'm good friends with and stuff like that. And I, I know within a week if it's gonna work or not, basically, or at least work enough for me to cover my costs. Um, and if it doesn't, yeah, I sort of let them know early on, or maybe and offer them an alternative, or something like that. But generally, all the all the venues I work for give me free hire, really. Um, you know, like I said, it would just be like a small bit of artwork made, maybe like fifty pounds or something, maybe less. <clears throat> I might have some old artwork or something like that, and then a little bit of promotion cost. If I test the water, I might put twenty quid on it or something like that, and then so yeah, if it doesn't work, it's really not the end of the world, basically. Okay, and do you spend much money on the talent that performs at the event? No, so I mean, another thing about keeping my cost down is. What I realised ages ago, because I'm, cause I'm a DJ and, you know, I've DJed from indie nights to dance hall to Afro beats to, um, to metal nights, to rock nights, ev- everything, drum and bass, house, you know, and, all, and in my opinion, I, I do a better job than some of these other DJs that are actually doing this full time, in my opinion, from what I've seen and the reactions and stuff. So, you know, with DJ talent spend i i don't you know if it's it's either friends of friends of mine who are, are obviously better than me and will provide a better service um or i do a lot of the djing myself you know just again to keep those costs down because you know if, if i can rake it if i can pull in an event for like you know talent and promotion costs for like 300 pounds you know, and you know, you're getting like three, four hundred people in or something like that. You know, the the percentage on profit and loss is 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 quite remarkable, really. And don't you don't you think sometimes it'd be great for you to book a, a DJ that's worth loads of tickets, that's that's high profile, <clears throat> or do you not want to play? That do you know game? that would be amazing. You know, I'd actually I'd really like to do that, but just from working in the industry so long, it's that's it's a, it's a business model that a freelance promoter can't really do that well because from from what I've experienced you know you book the talent to sell the tickets to fill the club to make the money on the bar you know so that business model works for a, a business where you take tickets and bar money and cloakroom money and any revenue coming into that uh, establishment whereas me I, I, I rely on ticket money and I, I don't get a percentage of the bar so I need to make my <clears throat> my profits within that um, that range of like ticket money, basically. Okay, and w- and with regard to um, the events that you you know you you obviously protect the downside very very well. If something looks like it's doing very well, if it's if it's as you said it's hot, what can you do? Is there is there a limit to the upside? What, what how do, how do you react to something oh, doing much better know, than you thought? So, just going back back a little bit, I used to work for Rebel Bingo, and that was after. Um, What's Rebel Bingo? Rebel Bingo is, uh, what is it like an independent events company? Well, they do they do a few events, but Rebel Bingo is a, <clears throat> like a bingo based event basically. Um, it's non talent led. It's sort of all done in house with like friends and family almost selling big selling big tickets they also do a few, couple of other events based on the similar non-talent led thing and when I started working for them after I left the Columbia Group XOY which was essentially a talent based organisation you know I fell in love with it because it was non-talent led and the blueprint was replicable so if something goes well with non-DJ with non-talent led based events you can replicate them so I just saw like, you know, Rebel Bingo doing a little tour because it worked in London. Let's try Manchester, Bristol, Brighton. And I was like, OK, you know, because you can make money on one event. But you can also make a lot more money on like five events of the same thing. So, you know, I just started <clears throat> taking that business model um, and applying it to my own events. So if like your, your question was, you know, what can I do to upside it? Well, you add multipliers to that, basically. Um, so yeah, you like, you know, you pick good cities, um, and, and you, and you do the event in different places, you know, and also you can rest it and do it again next year, you know, so it's, it's about having like, for me, it's about having like a a catalogue and like a, a collection of different events, um, that I can sort of roll out here, there and everywhere 
any, whenever I want, basically. So yeah, the upside is for me is 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 the multiplier, is the replication around. Can you it. give us an example of when that when that's happened really well <laughs> yeah. for you? Yeah. Okay. The the Sean Paul party was a really good one. It sounds so silly, but we we're just in Shoreditch House, and I was like, we we're just coming up with ideas, and I was like. Sean Paul pie and my friend was like oh my god no one's ever done that it's like well, not, no one's ever done that and it, but it's like oh my god it's a no-brainer and we were like we whacked it up we put, so what exactly was it Sean Paul party basically is just us playing loads of Sean Paul music and some other like dance hall and like <coughs> bashment and reggae tunes basically but all, all based around like Sean Paul's back catalogue which is pretty epic um yeah and like you know we put it up in Leeds we we like we put it up in Leeds um, just the Facebook event, we honestly, about three months before the event, we just like put it up just cause I put events up and it sort of like schedules them in. We went back, like we forgot about it and we went back a month later and it was on like 4,000 people. We put the tickets up the next day and sold out the whole venue in like 24 hours. It was like wild. And then like did Manchester, like Nottingham, <laughs> like Newcastle, it was Birmingham, like Brighton, you know, and that was a good example, and it's you know it's like the, the it's like keeping the cost down thing. It's like it's 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 trying to be smart and um, you know, picking up on trends that people might go for. And I've I've always had this thing of like, and it sounds so cheesy, but like selling dreams and not selling tickets. <laughs> like if if people like, like just go oh my god I want to do that and it's like essentially just me DJing like the amount of times I've sold out a venue or something and it's just me DJing you know it's so it's the story it's based, you told yeah it's just it's, 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 the, it's the package that has been presented to them so when you did the Sean Paul thing were you advertising it in that one month period or was the was the event was the event just growing on its own it was just growing on its own like I mean we, we when it starts rolling that you can put a bit of money in it and it sort of like sends it crazy but yeah like we we just we just you just sit there and watch the numbers talk really i mean it's changed a little bit now like facebook is a little bit less viral i think they might have s- sorted the algorithms a bit but there was there was a point like a year a year a year ago two years ago where like we were just rolling out these events like all the time so you do say 40 events yourself <clears throat> what's the limit on the number of events you do what why not do twice as many um yeah because again it's risk eat Events is a highly risky um, market to be in, basically. There is, like, it's, it's so up and down, you know. You can put an event up, it gets really good numbers, you know, and then you might only sell 100 tickets. Like, there's some things you just... There's, just, there's, there's a, a million anomalies in events. You know, you can be educated, you can be experienced, you can, you know, be good at what you do, but essentially there's some things you just can't help like if it's a rainy day or it snows or another like a massive concert is going on or it could be uh, so how do you manage your risk what steps do you take just pick the strongest ones pick the strongest cities and try and get the best dates um pick the strongest brands that i want to do and you know look what's going on in the city like at the moment manchester's pretty low on like urban events and stuff so i've chucked some stuff up in there and it's gone really well um yeah you've just got a be be knowledgeable in in your field basically and um you know you take risks and stuff but you you, i try and keep that to a minimum basically they're like highly educated guests is there a size of event that you won't do is there is the scale yeah like as soon as you get by yeah as soon as you get like really big like you know venues want a slice of the money um you know and there's more pressure to sell tickets sometimes like in in an event it you can only sell so many tickets. Even if you spent a million pounds on advertising one event, you can. It's, it's, it's like a saturation thing. It's like it's like mining it or something. You know, it's like you can. There's only so much there to be mined. You know what I mean? Like, there's only so many people that would come to this event. Even if I spent a million pounds, so, you know, and, yeah, around the, like four hundred, five hundred, three, four, five hundred is a, is a good is a good number. Yeah, just because. And you, you know, think after that point, there's diminishing returns. Uh, it de- it depends, you know, it depends what product you got, you know what I mean? You know, obviously doing big events is amazing. I love doing big events, but just being realistic and from what I do, because obviously I don't have staff costs, I don't have every, every, every penny that goes into whatever I do is, is from me and everything, all the work is from me. So, 
you know, I, I'm sort of limited. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. like, you know, a lot of events, people have like offices and teams bouncing ideas. People like, you know, interns, everyone doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Like my setup is just me basically. So I guess that is quite limited in ways, but also it just makes things very cost effective. You know, an office and a bunch of staff costs thousands and thousands, you know, and it, and it puts pressure on, on the business and stuff like that. Whereas me, there is no pressure, you know, you know, I could do one event a month and probably be fine just because of the, the nature of how my little business is set up, basically. Mm. Um, okay, so, so when you're coming up with themes or concepts for your, for your events, to what degree do you think people want familiar or to what degree do people want new and novelty? You know, so you, you can combine the both. You know, you can, you can be a brand that people are familiar with doing novelty stuff. Um, you know, yeah, so you can grow your brand still, but, but still throw out these novelty events and people can, can buy into both, essentially. Um, you know, the reimagined orchestra renditions and stuff is a good example of that, I feel, because there's so many copycat... Um, there's so many copycat businesses started off the back of that, essentially. You know, it's very important for Reimagine um, to, to keep the quality extremely high and and the, the venue's big and the quality good and the, Can the you explain musicians. What Reimagine is great. Is for this? Yeah, sorry. So Reimagined is a company set up uh, uh, from via the Clumber Group, basically. Um, and it's essentially orchestra renditions of like famous like and iconic albums and some artists and stuff like that. So, you know, it could be like a rent an, an a sixteen piece orchestral rendition of like Destiny's Child or Daft Punk or Biggie or you know some 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 huge names and you know the the reimagined name. Uh, it's just is known for its high quality. Because there's so many like copycat people offering like a, uh, a very inferior product and, you know, it's actually damaged the, the, the market for it because of these people like ripping it off and doing really bad jobs. And it gives everyone, it gives Reimagine a bad name, whereas ultimately Reimagine is the one given the quality product. So, you know, it's just been a part of the process of, you know, creating that brand recognition and, and trust, you know. And trust is such a massive thing in this space as well. You know, people people have been stung by bad events a lot of times and they then they're, they're not stupid. You know, if, if if they don't trust you, if they don't trust your venue, so say you can have a new venue and it's like, Oh, it's a great new venue and you post stuff out and if if it's not trusted, people won't come and it's the same with your brand. If it's not trusted, if they don't trust it, it's gonna be good, they won't come. How do you gain that trust? Just by doing good quality events, you know, providing providing a product that you're pr- that you're proud of and that you think is good. So if you're doing different themed events, for example, the Sean Paul, <laughs> will it all be under one brand name that people know, or or not? Uh, yeah. So I sort of do it under a couple. So Sean Paul crosses over. It's a it's a tribute thing. So I'm, I've got a brand called this is the this is um this is a tribute. But I also have like a dance hall, like soca brand called Get Busy, and obviously that crosses over, so I could like co promote it through various different channels. Basically, I've got other channels that it, it appeals to as well. So, um, yeah. Great. Okay. Um, that's all I have for you. Thank you very much. No worries. Thanks, for doing Thanks it. a lot, Andy. Thanks, Jason.